Hello, everybody. Buenas tardes, buenas noches. This is Abelardo de la Peña Jr., Director of Marketing and Communications at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, welcoming you to tonight's virtual cultura session in Casa con La Plaza 100 sessions. My gosh. This is La Plaza de Cultura y Artes virtual programming, including presentations, conversations, demonstrations, and performances three, four, five times a week. It's our way of fulfilling our mission of honoring the past, inspiring the future, and recognizing the enduring cultural influence of Mexican, Mexican Americans, and all Latinos, Latinas, in Los Angeles through transformative exhibitions, programming, and educational experiences. I should have this memorized by now, but that's why we have word processors and computers and things like that. Anyway, if you're on Zoom, please use the comment section to let us know where you're viewing from, ask questions, make comments. On Facebook, please, we have the comment section. Let us know where you're viewing from, ask questions, make comments, start a watch party. Let us know where you're viewing from as well. I probably already said that up before. Anyway, it's been a long day putting this 100th session together, just looking back at uh, what we've been doing since April the 27th. La Plaza de Cultura y Artes closed shop for a little while, temporarily, on March 14th, due, of course, to the pandemic that's been affecting us all. And um, we, of course, have been at the forefront, I think, of uh, being of doing programming that reaches out to our community, to you in your homes. That's why we call it En Casa Con La Plaza. So without further, further ado, let me go ahead and share screen here, if I could find it. Okay, there's the PowerPoint. Looks a little too small, hold on please. The technology has been uh, working overtime for me today. And let's see if I could make it happen. All right, there you go. All right, here we go. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight for our 100th episode of En Casa Con La Plaza. You know, when the pandemic started, we knew we had to do something to keep La Plaza alive and vital and, and, and vibrant in the community. And I'll tell you the truth, we had never even heard of Zoom. We didn't know uh, how to do this. We didn't know what we were gonna do, um, but we gave it a shot and we figured it out. And now a hundred episodes later, I think we've done a, a terrific job in keeping our community informed with uh, stimulating, uh, invigorating, interesting, fun uh, presentations. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, to continuing that uh, as we as we reopen next year. So I just want to give a big thanks to uh, to Abelardo for all his hard work in uh, in making it happen, for scheduling the guests, uh, for bringing us such a wide variety of of, uh, of people. Um, it really showcases the great talent that we have in our local Latino community here in Los Angeles, whether it's been historians or authors or politicians or entertainers or thinkers or talkers, uh, the wide range of people who we've had on the show have been terrific. So I thank Abelardo for that and for being such a terrific host with uh, very stimulating conversations uh, with a few bloopers that you'll see tonight as well too. Um, I also want to thank uh, our other uh, co-hosts who have done such a great job. Uh, Jimena Martin, who has uh, presented uh, cooking shows for us every Monday and does a great job there in showcasing uh, uh, the great culinary talent that we have here in the community. Uh, Beto Arcos, who has brought us some of the greatest and best uh, and up and coming and established uh, Latin artists, not only from the US, but from uh, Cuba and Mexico and other countries as well. And of course, for our man about town, uh, Dan Godetto, uh, for bringing us uh, a great array, great array of uh, Latin talent. 
uh, from Linda Ronstadt to Louis Perez to uh, Lucy Arnaz and everyone else who Dan has lined up for us um, and really revealing kind of uh, inside stories that you don't hear other in other places with them. So we're happy, we're happy that uh, we've been able to present this. We're, we really thank you for watching, for sharing it with your friends. Uh, that's what makes it viable and successful. Uh, we plan to continue, as I said, we'll continue uh, throughout the pandemic and we'll continue once we open as well too. You know, that's been one of the benefits of going through all this is that we have learned how to communicate in new and exciting ways. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing with this program. So again, thank you, Abelardo. Enjoy the show tonight. And uh, please, please come back and uh, see us again. We've got a great uh, menu of shows planned all the way through the first quarter of uh, next year. So we're very uh, much looking forward to seeing you again and having you back with us. Thanks. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Well, it's three o'clock uh, in the afternoon here in uh, beautiful Southern California, Pacific Standard Time. My name is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for La Plaza de Cultura y Artes in downtown LA. And this is our first session of En Casa con la Plaza. It is our way of continuing our programming, our, our outreach, our mission to tell the little told stories of Mexicans, Mexican Americans, and all Latinos here in Southern California. Our history, our growth, and our evolution. So uh, just real quickly, we're continuing, we're doing this to, uh, to present conversations, presentations, demonstrations, and performances in this medium called Zoom. And also, hopefully you'll be able to catch us, you're catching us on Facebook Live as well. This is streaming live. It will be recorded, it will be archived, so you can check it out later. Uh, these, they'll be 30 to 45 minutes long, maybe a little bit longer, uh, or maybe a little bit shorter, depending on how things go. And uh, we'll be inviting, as we invited today, the top Latino thinkers, authors, performers, uh, educators, and so on. Uh, there'll be a mix of uh, previously recorded and live content, uh, walkthroughs, workshops, concerts, panels, games, whatever we could think of, whatever works on, in this medium. Uh, of course, they're free. You're here uh, enjoying this. And uh, it's just a, a way to continue our, 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 our conversation that we have at the museum through our programming, through our exhibitions. Okay, so with that, I want to just uh, uh, thank you all for uh, coming. And now my my uh, honor to introduce to to all of you. If well, well, that was then. Uh, back in April twenty seventh, our first uh, in Casa con la Plaza <laughs> perf uh, performance uh, uh, presentation session is what we call them. Um, and uh, things were a little 
you saw you know, most people have the quarantine 15. I grew it all on my face after about a month and a half of being in quarantine here uh, in, in my home. And uh, but tonight it's it's looking back at uh, sessions that we've done uh, as I mentioned, as we mentioned every every time we come on, it's conversations, presentations, uh, demonstrations and performances. So we're gonna just uh, go back in time a little bit and uh, and look to see, Ooh, there we go. That's one of those glitches that we speak of. Uh, but uh, from the very beginning, we, we really, you know, took, of course, the, the lockdown, the, the quarantine, the, the, the pandemic seriously. Uh, and, and fortunately, at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, we were able to uh, work out of the house and, and um, to do the work that we needed to do. And work has continued throughout um, until now. Uh, there, there have been, you know, we're, we're fully staffed and so on, but we'll, we'll get to that later. But for now, let me just uh, uh, present our first look back, our, our first guest uh, as a uh, well-known uh, journalist and, uh, and TV personality nowadays, uh, the one and only, um, let's see if I could find him, Gustavo Arellano. A ver. One of the most impacted one of the big hotspots for coronavirus and COVID-19 has been nursing facilities, assisted living facilities, where some of our most vulnerable members of society, our viejitos, a lot, many times, they're there. The workers who are treating them are getting infected and dying. The, the old folks themselves, they're getting infected and they're dying. And it's a tragedy. Uh, you, you, in, in Huntington Beach, you had one facility, I think it was 53 people got infected. The fatalities weren't that bad, but I think in Riverside County, you had really bad versions of Ukaipa. There was one facility that just got devastated by this. So part of Coronavirus in California, my podcast, is talking to those affected communities. Those, uh, those communities are disproportionately affected. So you have uh, assisted living facilities. You have Latinos and African Americans. We're dying by, at higher rates nationwide, and even especially in LA County, than, uh, than our population figures would have you uh, initially believe. The incarcerated people, not, not just people in prison, but also people uh, at, the, uh, at the Adelanto Detention Center, uh, Center up in Adelanto uh, for, for undocumented folks. I talked to one guy, uh, Sergio Jonathan Moreno from El Monte. He literally just got out two weeks ago. Uh, the ACLU of Southern California, they, and they're currently suing Adelanto, but they filed a writ of habeas corpus basically saying, if Sergio does not get released now, he has a grave danger of getting co coronavirus because of just how packed those facilities are. So I talked to him. Uh, to me, it's important. I don't mind talking to celebrities. I don't mind talking to officials. They also have important things to say. But I like talking to people, just you know, just plain old folks, for lack of a better term. Everyone has a story. I want to hear those stories. Uh, what's one of the most impactful stories that, that you've heard and that you've reported on? To me, still the saddest one was my friend, Sonia Velez. Uh, she's a senior administrative assistant at Long Beach City College, Bell resident. And uh, th this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was tell the stories of people like her family. I saw on Facebook, she's like, Mi tío Ca uh, Carlos, le, le decían Calín. Mi tío Calín passed away from coronavirus. And she was the first person I knew whose family was impacted in that way. So I interviewed her. It was the third episode. You hear it, it's heartbreaking. He was a wonderful man. He was involved in his parish and in his church in Bell. Uh, you know, they're Salvadoran refugees and just had this wonderful life. And then it just got taken away from coronavirus. I asked Sonia, how was your family mourning? And her answer was just heartbreaking. Alone. They couldn't have the funeral for uh, Tio. She hasn't even been able, she was never able to say goodbye to him. It's just, it's terrible. Like, so, and stories like that, they're all not going to be heartbreaking. A lot of them are going to be surreal, but more importantly, they're all real. They're all stories that, again, your neighbors, your family members, your friends are going to have to deal with. All right. Uh, well, that was uh, Gustavo Ariano. At the time, he was a feature writer for the LA Times, uh, and he initiated the uh, podcast uh, COVID in, in the time, California in the time of COVID. And uh, it, he, he would uh, podcast every pretty much daily uh, uh, for a few months. And, uh, but now 
Gustavo, due to his writing ability, of course, and his way to communicate with people, he's now been promoted to a columnist. So, so you'll see his, uh, his byline in the LA Times uh, on a pretty regular basis. And uh, we're very proud of him for all the work that he's done. Uh, he's been a good friend of, of La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. And uh, I think he's, he, of course, ha has uh, been very uh, critical of people that have not taken this seriously. And in fact, uh, last week, I think he, he, he did a, a story on his community uh, in Santa Ana, around where he lives. I think he lives in Anaheim. And basically saying Latinos are still not masking up for the most part that he sees, uh, not taking it seriously. And he's calling them pandejos. Uh, so let's, don't be a pandejo, please. Uh, that's one point of view. Of we also have uh, a, a guest that we had on. In fact, it was the, the, a panel, uh, UCLA Health Center for the Study of Latino Health and Culture. Uh, the, the esteemed uh, researcher and, and scholar, Dr. David Hayes Bautista and the team that spoke uh, on in Casa con la Plaza on on the pandemic and uh, what it looks like within the Latino community. And I'll, I'll share that with you now. Fields. All right, Professor, take it away. Thank you. First thing I'm going to do is share screen because I want to share with our audience uh, some findings that we have come through. So I wanna chat for the next few minutes about Latino health and social narratives. Sobre todo narratives about Latinos. So ever since April, COVID has been I'm, the major source of death in Los Angeles County in the state of California, and then as well as across the country. And early in the pandemic, the issue arose, why do Latinos, African-Americans, why do populations of color have higher death rates than non-Hispanic whites? And in the middle of July, uh, as we see here, the Asian death rate compared to white is about 50% higher for Alaska, American Indian, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, and Black, uh, about four times as high, and Latinos about five times as high as non-Hispanic white. So it's very clear something is going on, but what? The question is why? And this is where narratives come into play, trying to answer this question, why the high Latino COVID-19? So this is the most important thing. This will be on the final. Just kidding, no finals. But remember this, facts tell different stories depending on who is picking them and placing them in a narrative line. Well, what do you mean? Isn't research objective? Well, let's take a look. All right, well, that, that was uh, just a, a little part of the, the panel that uh, that uh, we that took place here at En Casa con la Plaza uh, just a little while ago, uh, the 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 concept of narratives, the people telling stories. That's uh, that's what we do at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. We tell the stories, the untold stories, little known stories of Mexican, Mexican Americans, and all Latinas and Latinos here in Southern California, in, in the growth his and the evolution of our of our community. Um, through exhibitions and through programming and through, through educational programs. Uh, one exhibition that we were planning on and we still continue to plan for is, is uh, one built around the, the Chicano Moratorium, a very important uh, event within the, the, the historical Latino community, uh, which took place uh, 50 years ago, August 29th, 1970. Uh, the work continues, of course, but uh, it, due to the pandemic, uh, we had to scale back or, or just delay it a, a bit. But we were able to to uh, get some firsthand um, commentary by one of the organizers of the Chicano Moratorium, Rosalio Munoz, who came on to La Casa in Casa con la Plaza to share with us some of his uh, memories and uh, and insights on that. Uh, very vital um, event that took place 50 years ago. So, so I'll again share the screen and uh, listen in on, on Rosalio. Here goes. We're not just here concerned for ourselves. We're concerned for improving the country and our social condition and that the injustices we face 
but we want to have a movement that is beneficial to the country. And so that was our call on August 20, 29th. And uh, here, quite, quite successful with, uh, with an estimated 20,000 participants coming in from, like you say, all over, not just East LA, but all, all over Southern California and even from other parts of California. Yeah. yeah I love this picture because one, you, uh, uh, in the left side, you have a guy that's an activist. Uh, his father was a major Teamster leader, helped us get the buses going from uh, to take people to the demonstration. And there's an African American. And this was a black and, uh, and Chicano youth with a cannon fodder. And we'd march it so we wouldn't have to have any cannon fodder in, in, in that time. And yeah. so, and they marched, these young guys marched uh, three and a half miles through a 90 degree heat uh, to do that. And actually the day I was at a caravan and um, uh, this young man uh, was there. Uh, who, uh, Conrado Terrazas. Conrado Terrazas, yeah. That, he was there uh, with his sister as well, the family, very progressive and peace-minded people. All right, here we are. Well, thank you, uh, Rosalio. Uh, we, we wrapped a couple of their programs uh, around the moratorium around that time in, in late August, including uh, a session with, uh, with Agustin Gursa, a musical scholar, uh, a columnist, a, a former LA Times writer, a, a, a concentrating on Latino music, who did a, a session on songs of the Chicano moratorium. We also did a session with, uh, with four people who attended the moratorium and were impacted by what they saw, what they experienced, and how it led them uh, in, in their career, in their artistic life. Uh, Willie Herron, uh, Chuy Vela, Maria Elena, Maria Elena Yepes, and um, and I forgot the last one. I'm sorry, but uh, but yeah, narratives, of course, stories that are told, little known stories that are told. That's what. We do at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, and now I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, 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 of course, uh, an important event that took place this year was the election. Uh, it impacts all of us, of course, uh, still being, I think it's been decided, of course, and the, the Electoral College will, will determine, will, will cast their votes and make it official uh, today at the, Supreme, at the Supreme Court. The um, a group of, of um, the Texas state uh, tried to overturn the, the election of battleground states. Read all about it in the news, uh, much better explanation than I can give you. But we took that uh, upon uh, at La Plaza, the elections, and we had a panel discussion, Decision 2020, and uh, brought a panel uh, of disparate um, panelists uh, hosted by Mirta Salinas of uh, Estrella TV, uh, included uh, Luis Alvarado and um, the, the, uh, a couple other political analysts. So here I'm gonna share the screen and you could uh, listen to Luis Alvarado um, as a response to a question here. Yeah. A final de cuenta, at the end of the day, what we need to look at is not just what's happening at the national election with the presidential, but sometimes for our community, we have to learn how to participate at the local level. We need to have to understand that sometimes you're going to have communities where there's a greater representation of, of, of Latinos, you're going to have a better quality of life. I know of cities where like we, the proverbial, you know, the, the other side of the tracks has better lighting, faster police response. They have, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the best uh, uh, service cars go there, and you look at the lower uh, the communities on the other side where there's more Latino community, you know, they don't get the same quality of service that the municipal uh, 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 entity is providing. So as Latinos, we have to learn not only when you go to vote, to look at the top of the ticket and says, well, I'm not going to vote for this guy or I'm not going to vote for that guy, but you have to stay and you have to vote the whole ballot. You have to le uh, learn to understand and invest and who's gonna represent you at the local level. So when something goes wrong, you can pick up the phone and say, Mr. Councilman, M Madam C uh, uh, County Supervisor, 
we need your help. We need you to come and talk to us. And that's what's important for our community. And I think we're getting there. You know, from 20 years ago, from 10 years ago, our community is actually starting to understand the power that we have. And when we talk about the other side uh, of, of, of the coin is because we are young, I'm very excited to see that young people are coming out to vote. Estoy uh, orgulloso de ver de que en esta elección, los jóvenes, tal vez porque están más metidos en la casa por, por la situación de la pandemia, uh, están poniendo más atención y han salido a votar temprano en números que nunca hemos visto. Así que ojalá ese, ese, ese tren continúe y sean partícipes del proceso porque ellos, ellos en verdad son el futuro de la comunidad latina. They are the future of the community as the Latinos. Okay, that was uh, Luis Alvarado, uh, who participated in a Decision 2020, a panel that we had here at, in Casa Con La Plaza. Uh, we also uh, brought in the Puro Political Party, Puro Political Party, a group of uh, grassroots uh, activists who uh, throughout the, the, the primaries and it, starting last year actually, uh, were reaching out to, to Latinos, uh, not only locally, but also nationally letter writing, canvassing, uh, phone calling, and uh, who actually, I think, made a, a big impact on uh, with Latinos uh, in, in other states, which, uh, which led to, to victories for, for uh, a certain party, which I belong to in, in Arizona, and also in, in, uh, in Georgia and Nuevo Mexico and so on. So we take on these, these issues at, at, in Casa Con La Plaza. These are the conversations we have, the conversations that draw people in that uh, are important to, to uh, dialogue upon. So, but it, it's not all, we're not all serious all the time. So yeah. let's see what else we have here next. Uh, you know, I don't even know, but uh, we'll both be surprised here. Here goes. Hola amigos. My name is Gloria Arjona. I am an educator and a performer. And today I invite you to give a standing ovation to En Casa Con La Plaza on its 100th program anniversary. Thanks to La Plaza de la Cultura y Artes for hosting programs that greatly enrich our spirits just when we need it. Muchas felicidades al programa En Casa con la Plaza en este día en que se cumplen 100 programas desde el inicio de la pandemia. Gracias por su atención y no dejen de ver En Casa con la Plaza. Well, that was uh, Dr. Gloria Arjona, uh, uh, a great friend of La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. She uh, appeared at La Plaza, one of the last programs that we had uh, before we temporarily closed down. And uh, I remember it was a rainy evening and she brought in a crowd and uh, with her passion, with her talent, with her, with her deep knowledge of Mexican history. And uh, just recently, she, so on En Casa Con La Plaza, she has done three, three sessions so far. Uh, I think the first ever Loteria, uh, Juego de Loteria, on, on, on the internet. Um, more than 100, 150 people participated in that one on, on Zoom. And, uh, and then most recently on Soldaderas, the, the women revolutionaries uh, during the, the Mexican revolution, uh, just this last week. And you could catch all of these uh, on our YouTube page at La Plaza LA, on our Facebook page at La Plaza LA, and on our website, lapca.org. Um, it was hard to choose the, the sessions because there are just so many and, and so many talented people. Hola amigos. Well, there she is. Uh, here goes, I'm gonna share just a little bit more and then we're gonna move forward. This portion, it, it, you might guess, the first portion was about our conversations, kind of serious. This is a little more entertaining, a little more lighthearted. Uh, what we generally do on Friday nights is, uh, is concentrate on la, la musica, la musica latina. So, so here we go. right here and I will uh, go live because I want to play let me I want to play this song for you because I realize um, I realize uh, Abelardo are you there 
Okay, I realized that the sound was not very good. Uh, so that's what I want you to, uh, yeah, I, I want to make sure that everything is okay because I, I paused the presentation. Yes, I saw to sing, I had to sing. But sing now, away. I do, okay. <laughs> Stop right here. Sometimes we forget the words of Los Pollitos, um, but um, sing along with me and just sing which one you know, okay? And it's good because it's una canción de cuna, okay? So it's just kind of chill out like a little lullaby. Mm -hmm. Ready? Los pollitos dicen, pío, 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 cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío, la gallina busca el maíz y el trigo, les da su comida y les presta vino. Bajo sus dos alas acurcaditos, hasta el otro día duermen los pollitos. Start the way a Fandango usually starts and then is doing a, a CKCD, but I want to say that these verses were written by um, members of, um, my, including myself, as a member of San Lunes de la Versada. And I want to get a shout out to our maestro Patricio Hidalgo for guiding us through these versos. And um, this is dedicated to this moment in time. Please.
salud está en la risa, quédate ligera del pecho, a ligera del pecho, la salud está en la risa. Oh my God, that was uh, Quetzal Family Trio with uh, Quetzal Flores and Marta Gonzalez of uh, Quetzal and um, the, the very well-known musical group here in, in Southern California and their son on the piano, Sandino, 15 years old. Oh my gosh. And uh, their, their friend on the bass, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. And before that, we had uh, Sara Quintanar, a uh, good friend of uh, La Plaza, uh, introduced to us by, by our colleague, Kimberly Chavez, uh, with a bilingual music jam, uh, sang some beautiful songs for, for children. And, and I know that she continues to, to uh, sing, uh, teach uh, from a socially distanced manner. Um, we have more. Uh, we have a lot of music on our site. We've had, uh, I mean, some incredible artists that uh, it was really difficult to choose to choose from who would uh, appear on this Sorry, 100 episode. Uh, but, uh, but we're gonna continue and um, please enjoy. If you have any comments, uh, we hear, have a few here. Uh, Olivia Wilkins, good evening. Thank you for a nice event here from Lucerne Valley in California. Nancy de los Santos, thank you, Nancy. Enjoying La Musica. Chispa Hills, enjoyed la, the Loteria. Um, Chispa Hills, a very uh, a, a frequent viewer of En Casa Con La Plaza. We appreciate you being here along with everybody else. A lot of waves. We have Frankie Firme in the house. Frankie Firme was, uh, was uh, one of our, our uh, on our session here a few months back, uh, an expert in, in, the, in the Chicano oldie scene. But uh, let's continue. Here, here goes. Gracias a la Plaza de Cultura y Artes por compartirnos a Gaby. Bendiciones, Gaby. Guate te extraña también. También. Mucho, mucho. Bonitos ojos tienes debajo de esas dos cejas, debajo de esas dos cejas, qué bonitos ojos tienes. Ellos me quieren mirar, pero si tú no los dejas, pero si tú no los dejas. Ni siquiera parpadear. Niña salerosa, besar tus labios quisiera, besar tus labios quisiera, malagueña salerosa. Y decir de niña hermosa. 
hermosa, que eres linda y hechicera, que eres linda y hechicera, como el candor de una rosa. Yo soy pura guatemalteca y me gusta bailar el sol. Si por pobre me desprecias, yo te concedo razón. Yo te concedo razón. Si por pobre me desprecias. Yo no te ofrezco riquezas, te ofrezco mi corazón, te ofrezco mi corazón a cambio de mi pobreza. Malaguer. Oh my gosh, that's chilling. Um, Gabby Moreno, international star of, uh, of the concert stage of recording, uh, a crossover artist uh, from Guatemala settled here in Los Angeles, brought to you by Beto Arcos. Beto Arcos, as John mentioned in the beginning, uh, a great friend of La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, uh, he has uh, hosted a few of the, the shows, bringing his, his familiarity and intimacy and knowing about the music in Latino music in particular, and bringing that knowledge and bringing that, those talents to En Casa Con La Plaza. And uh, in fact, uh, Beto will be one of our first guests of 2021 Ooh. Uh, on the 15th, where he'll be uh, presenting his newly published book, The Cosmic Barrio, uh, where he recounts more than 80, possibly a, a, a hundred of the interviews that he's done over the years with a, a range of, of artists of musical talent uh, from Southern California, from Latin America and throughout the world. So, so uh, please check us out on, on lapca.org on our schedule, on our calendar listing, then you'll see uh, an opportunity to tune in and meet uh, Beto, who will be talking about these great artists that he, he he's very uh, familiar with and, and friendly with. So that again, Gabby Moreno, you could catch the, the whole session on our YouTube uh, page uh, at La Plaza LA. And uh, that was a tremendous uh, session 
it, it was unfortunately not on Zoom that evening. We, we did something so that we could uh, reach out to a, a larger audience, but we, with more than uh, almost 20,000 Facebook views and about 500 of uh, YouTube views and uh, great conversation, wonderful music worth checking out on our on our YouTube, uh, Facebook, and, and website. This next one is, um, I, I think you, you, you may recognize one of the, the artists who was a, a La Plaza, uh, the Cultura y Artes um, colleague of ours for, uh, for a number of years. And then she, um, as, a, as an assistant curator in our curatorial team, uh, went off and, uh, and now is doing music full time both as a musician and also teaching music uh, in, in, the, in the, the public setting. So uh, without, without further ado, here we go. Let me see if I could get to that. Gracias a la plaza. Okay, there you go. Okay, here goes. That was uh, Mary Alfaro Velasco uh, 
formerly with La Plaza de Cultura y Arte, is a, a great friend of La Plaza, of course, uh, on the on the rhythm guitar, a different interpretation of La Malagueña. Um, I love that song, so I wanted to hear it twice by two different artists and uh, accompanying her, or actually on the lead, was uh, Jesus uh, Martinez, uh, who has um, really expanded, uh, let's see, connection loss. I'm just seeing something on my, on my waves on my screen here. But uh, yeah, so Jesus and Mary recorded this, one of our early shows, Canciones de las Americas, where they interpreted songs, well-known songs from both sides of the border in a very uh, intimate, social distance, as you, as you noticed, way uh, that really just a, a, a lot of passion, a lot of talent, a lot of uh, virtuosity. So uh, you could catch that one on our YouTube page at La Plaza LA, uh, the complete show, and I, I know that you'll enjoy it. This is by no means, though I'm sure you're enjoying the, the caliber of talent that we have there, it's by no means the best of En Casa Con La Plaza. It's just some selections because I think all of them have been outstanding. But these are some that uh, I, I chose, we chose specifically, my, my colleague Mario Hernandez and, and I chose specifically for tonight's show. Uh, we have one more uh, music uh, number, I think, because uh, that's what seems to be happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, without further ado, uh, get it going. Hermosa, 
una cultura rica que nos alegra y nos da sazón. ¡Ah! Ay, no más, no más, ay, no más, no más. Mañana voy al rodeo a aprender a manganear, a aprender a manganear. Ay, amor, amor, porque me parece feo que todos sepan lazar, que todos sepan lazar y yo nada más los veo. Ay, no más, no más, no más. Salgan todos los negritos, salgan todos a la pampa. Uno sale con su pico y otro sale con su lampa. Uno sale con su pico y otro sale con su lampa. A que no me quema, a que no me quema el alcatraz, a que no me quema, a que no me quema el alcatraz, a que no me quema, a que no me quema el alcatraz. No me lo puede quemar, no, no me lo puede quemar el al, el alcatraz, el al. El Alcatraz, el, el Alcatraz, el Alcatraz, el Alcatraz.
Increíble, increíble. Increíble, increíble. That was uh, Beto Arcos at the end, bringing together uh, uh, a trio of incredible musicians. Uh, that was uh, a show back in, uh, in June. The African influence uh, in Latin American music. It was uh, in, during the, the pandemic, right before the pandemic, um, or at least the lockdown, we'd opened up uh, an exhibition Afro-Latinidad, Mi Casa, My City, which uh, was an overview of the, the Afro-Latino community here in, in Los Angeles. Uh, an incredible exhibition, which you'll be able to see a little bit of, of it if you hang out, hang on uh, for the rest of the evening here. But uh, this was one of the programs we were, we generally have up to 80 programs per, per year. Uh, they're at La Plaza de Cultura, Cultura y Artes live on our stages and our in our conference rooms on our, in our patio. And this was one that we had already planned and we brought it together. The musicians there were uh, Cesar Castro, Arrequinto Jarocho, and the, um, the Zapateado there, Angelo Salazar, Guitarra Acústica, and Eduardo Martinez, uh, Tambor Alegre, Tambor Llamador, y Gaitas. And I don't know who that dancer was, but, but what an incredible performance there. Thank you to Beto Arcos. And um, again, you could check out the entire uh, session here in Casa con la Plaza on our YouTube page, uh, Facebook page, and on our website where uh, Beto gives, and of course his compañeros give a very uh, uh, a great overview of the influence of African music on Latino music, particularly uh, in the Veracruz region. So uh, we're going to continue here. Uh, let's see what's up next. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, change of pace. As you uh, no, uh, those of you who are regular viewers of En Casa Con La Plaza, on Mondays we have En Casa Con La Plaza Cocina. Uh, one of our, the, the initiatives at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes is to uh, the, the institution and the building of a museum, which uh, a partner museum called La Plaza Cocina, which will be dedicated to the, to the appreciation, the study, the research, and the presentation of the best cuisine of the world, Mexican food. Uh, it's gonna be located right across the street from, uh, from uh, on Spring Street behind our, our outdoor stage. It's uh, in La Plaza Village, which is also a La Plaza de Cultura y Artes initiative, uh, a project that we partnered with, with uh, LA County, with uh, Cesar Chavez Foundation and a few others. It's uh, presently occupied, um, it's, um, uh, a multi-use complex with uh, apartments and retail space on the bottom. We have a prime location right across the street from La Plaza, which will be a museum, a teaching kitchen, and a tiendita. And um, we've been, every Monday we present cooking demonstrations, and, uh, uh, platicas about food, about Mexican food, and, uh, and the, the, the director or the, the, the director of, of programming who throughout for more than 10 years now has been with La Plaza de Cultura y Artes and, and newly given the, the responsibility of doing the programming for La Cocina, Jimena Martin. So let me go ahead and, uh, and uh, share this brief message from her to all of us. Hola, um, I'd like to thank all our supporters for these past 100 sessions. It's been an honor to be with me in casa Cocina series here with Alberaldo. Also, I'd like to thank all our community and our chefs, our pop-ups, our teachers. I'd like to thank uh -huh. Mateo Gomez Rejon, who always brings us a little history. Nati from Papa Pancho's, who tells us beautiful family stories. Also, our incredible chefs like John Sedler, all the way from New Mexico. And we even have voices from Mexico City, Eliseo, who brings us baking treats for our community. Again, muchísimas gracias, it's been an honor. I hope to see you for another 100. Happy holidays and thank you. Rojo salsa. That's uh, um, interesting. Salsa de chile rojo? Chile rojo or chile verde. Uh, salsa. I wouldn't call it a salsa. I'd call it a sauce. But mm -hmm. what is the uh, uh, Spanish correlation? Ximena. Una salsa de mesa. Una salsa para la... Para la comida, la salsa para el pollo. 
I have another greetings here, John. Gloria Mejia from the Autry says hello. Oh, good, wonderful. We did a party for the Autry Museum here in Santa Fe. That was really wonderful. Boy, that museum is looking beautiful. They're really doing extraordinary things there. So we're gonna take white wine and add it to the garlic and then reduce that by half. You can see here that Vilma is being very careful to not uh, touch the veins too much. Uh, of course, this is the door and it opens up from side to side. Uh, and then at the top, see, I told her to leave some seeds for a little vida, a little spice, but um, uh, she took them all out. Anglos like all the seeds out. Latinas like all, half the seeds in. <laughs> a little more vida there. Rojo salsa. So one thing that I did want to point out is that Okay, so we did not give you guys our secret recipe to our sauces, but because of course that's our money maker, you know, and that's how we're different. But uh, we we do have one which is our avocado cilantro lime sauce. Can you pass it? Um, so this is what we're gonna put on it, and it's it's pretty much what it what it is. It's an avocado cilantro sauce. Um, a lot of uh, another sauce that we use is the chipotle habanero, which is the only sauce that has like a kick to it. It just has a little bit of spiciness to it. And then like um, Griselda was saying was the, um, the traditional white um, Baja Crema. And we sell those sauces as like a trio sauce. So it's, you get all three sauces in like one peel. So we'll add those on to our link as well. <laughs> Thank you. So. Sometimes it's very difficult when I find a recipe and it just says like bake for 15 minutes. It's like, how can you say that? Like if someone has a convection oven, if someone has a gas oven, if someone has like a little countertop oven, these will bake in different um, speeds. So I, this ones, it could be maybe from 15 to 20 minutes before they are ready. You want to take them out of the oven when they barely start getting some color, but like very, very lightly. Let me show you the one that has been um, baked. This one barely has some color. On the bottom, it does have some color, but not on the sides or on the top. That's when you want to take them out of the oven. And if you can, please transfer them to a cooling rack. Um, these two plants that I have growing here, I actually didn't know that they were native to Mexico. I have these growing in my, in my backyard. This is sage. Um, you see this a lot. Um, Italian cooking uses sage a lot. It's called salvia in, in Spanish. It's really delicious with, with pork dishes, um, which is how I usually use it in pork dishes. But medicinally, this was actually used as a tea for menstrual pain and also for hot flashes. Um, and it's very, very fragrant and it has a really strong flavor. Um, it's used a lot in, in meats and barbecues, anything that really needs kind of a lot of, um, just a, a lot of, this withholds, you know, strong flavors. And then I have this plant called pineapple sage. So the leaf is much, thinner and bright green. This one is a little bit fuzzy. This one is, is not at all. It's so thin. It's almost translucent. Um, this, it's a, it's a bush. It's actually pretty tall. It grows about this tall. I love it and I grow it because of the little tiny red flowers that it has, um, which attract butterflies and hummingbirds. So I love, I love, I love it for that. But this was actually used as a tea to lower blood pressure and to um, really have, give a relief to anxiety. Um, so this was used again for anxiety and for blood pressure. So now I know when I'm feeling anxious, I'm gonna start making teas, um, even though it calms me just to look at the butterflies and the, and the hummingbirds you know, around them. But these are two, um, these three appear in this Aztec herbal. It's called the Bavianus manuscript as well, named after the, the man who translated it. Um, and then I have 
the ipasote that we're going to be cooking with today. Hello again. Uh, let me stop the share there. And th that was just a, a small sampling of uh, on the menu of uh, In Casa Con La Plaza Cocina sessions. Uh, the final one there was Maite Gomez Rejon. She's uh, participated in uh, three, going on four sessions. Uh, that one was on Mexican herbs and, and their use in, uh, in, of course, Mexican cuisine. And as you see, she gets deep into the history, uh, deep into the, 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 the origins of the plants and, and their uses. Uh, we also had, uh, the first up was uh, uh, John uh, Rivera Sedler, uh, a Michelin star uh, award, or James Beard award winner, uh, formerly of uh, uh, Rivera's in near Staples Center. And uh, now living in Santa Fe, he was doing some green hatch chili, uh, chili renos, uh, uh, hatch chili chile renos. And uh, my, my God, they look delicious. And then we had uh, the people from Papa Panchos uh, doing their uh, special beer battered shrimp uh, tacos. And then Eliseo Lara from Mexico City, uh, a pan dulce gourmet ex expert who did tricolor polvorones. And both of uh, uh, Maite will be joining us next week uh, on Monday with the history of masa. And she'll be doing uh, a couple, a, a champurrado and, and uh, another uh, memeladas, so algo así, which uh, sound delicious. And it'll be a, uh, a session sponsored by Northgate Markets. Uh, okay, uh, real quickly, let me mention our, our sponsors. For those of you that are still tuning in, thank you so much. I know it's, it's been a long one and we just have a little ways to go, but this is a special one, our 100th session. Uh, early on, we had AARP uh, as a sponsor. Um, also, now we have SoCal Gas. Um, we have, um, my gosh, I better remember because they, they're, they're paying for, they're paying our bills here. Uh, California hum Humanities. Uh, and coming up is um, uh, starting next month, uh, Kaiser Permanente and, um, and somebody else, which I, I better remember or, or my bosses will, will will uh, get down on me, but we will definitely appreciate the sponsorships that, that I'll, I'll have given to En Casa Con La Plaza. So we're gonna continue with our, our next sec session. And uh, we talked about him uh, earlier. John mentioned uh, this, uh, the, the Gab Master uh, himself, uh, but here, here it goes. He could introduce himself because he, as he says, some people need no introduction. Hola. Guess who? Ha, Dan Guerrero. Just wishing La Plaza de Culta y Artes all great things on their rest of their sessions because they just celebrated their 100th session of the En Casa series. I'm very proud that the happy hour with Dan Guerrero is one of them. And I'm also very proud to be part of the La Plaza Familia. So keep watching, keep supporting La Plaza, this amazing museum that has been so smart in reinventing themselves during this challenging time. Be safe, be well, and happy holidays. with that so of course every one of our guests is special and we have a really special one tonight i'm happy to introduce so go away i'll see you at the end and let me no i mean that in a good way i mean that in a good way <laughs> yeah uh he he calls that banter uh but i know we're, we're good friends that's uh dan guerrero and uh just gonna show you a couple of his guests that he's brought on to the show and along with a, a short clip of one of his uh, most noteworthy conversations. Uh, and I was reminded by, by John Echeveste that PepsiCo is one of our upcoming sponsors along with Kaiser Permanente. And um, so, so here goes a little bit more of uh, just a couple of the, the guests that Dan has brought on. And then that, like I said, that brief uh, snippet of, uh, oh, that's not it, share the screen. Okay, here goes with that. So. It's Richard Montoya uh, of Culture Clash, uh, writer, screenwriter, recently did the, uh, the directing and co-production of uh, Carlos Almaraz, Man on Fire, a documentary on, on Carlos Almaraz. 
Uh, Vicky Carr, of course, uh, one of the, the preeminent singers from the 60s and 70s, one of the first uh, Chicana, self-described uh, Chicana, uh, to hit the pop charts. Uh, Nicholas Gonzalez, uh, actor, activist, most recently on The Good Doctor, uh, he was, uh, the conversation when he was quarantining uh, from Vancouver. And then uh, La Marisol, of course, we all know La Marisol from uh, La Santa Cecilia and um, an Olvera Street, uh, um, just a, a fixture there. Uh, her father was, ran a couple of the, the stands there, uh, passed away last year, but uh, you'll see La Marisol at La Placita Olvera and at La Plaza and also on a mural uh, on La Plaza Village if you, uh, Go north on Broadway, just north of the, the 110 freeway, you'll see La Marisol uh, in, on a mural painted by the great artist Jose Lozano, along with uh, uh, another mural by Judith uh, Hernandez, uh, Barbara Car another Barbara Carrasco and Miguel Angel Reyes um, at La Plaza murals. Uh, and then we have uh, this gentleman, which I'm, I'm sure you know who he is, and he's talking about uh, probably his one of his most famous roles, but definitely his breakout Role in motion pictures, and then one week goes by, two weeks go by. The play is supposed to start rehearsal on on Monday. It's Friday night of the Monday before rehearsal start. I've heard nothing, nothing. They didn't nothing, nothing, nothing. About eight o'clock at night, the phone rings on a Friday night. Now I said, no, they're, they're, they're not calling me on a Friday night at eight o'clock. These people are gone already. They they they've already cast it, and they're, they're doing getting ready for the production to start and it was um, amazing because the uh, stage manager called me up and says, um, Edward, I go, yeah, he goes, uh, uh, we'd like to know if you'd like to do the part of El Pachuco in Zoot Soup. And uh, I said, uh, yeah, I, I, I would like to do that, yeah. And I, it pushed me up against the wall at the time on the phone, boom, and I'm trying to keep my cool trying desperately hard to keep my cool and, and remember i haven't seen anything of the script yet no script we had seen nothing we had seen absolutely nothing all i had seen was one page and uh, I, my, I my back went against the wall and 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 i said thank you very much and and they hung up the phone and i slid down the the wall real slides just slid down the wall and i and, I, and my eyes were just pouring. I, I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop. I said to myself, my God, this is it. I said, ah. Dan, as I stand, sit here in front of you today, <laughs> 74, I was 31 when that happened. From that day to this day, my life has never been the same. Yeah, and um, uh, Chicano filmmaking has never been the same since then. Uh, that was uh, uh, back in the 70s. Uh, Luis Valdez was the writer of uh, Zoot Suit, first to play, uh, then a motion picture. It's been revived a couple of times, uh, most recently at the Music Center a, a, few, a couple of years ago. Uh, but Edward James Olmos has gone on to, of course, um, magnificent parts throughout his career, Stand and Deliver, uh, Blade Runner, um, American Me. Uh, we honored him at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes a couple summers ago in, our, in a film series where we showed uh, the Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, Stand and Deliver, American Me, and uh, brought out some tremendous crowds. Uh, Dan has been able to bring in some incredible people, uh, Lalo Alcaraz, of course, uh, Dolores Huerta, uh, Gregory Nava, director, uh, Marga Gomez, Susana Guzman, the, the opera uh, singer, um, Vicky Carr, as I mentioned, and most recently, Lucy Arnez, the, the daughter of Desi Arnez and, and Lucille Ball. Uh, an incredible personal intimate interviews. Dan is able to bring out uh, some great details and insights of their lives. Um, uh, due to his conversational style, the, the guy is uh, amazing. Kind of a pain every now and then, but don't tell him I said so. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, we're almost there. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging in there. Uh, now we're going to move into uh, a little bit off 
the En Casa con la Plaza topic, but hit on some topics that are important to La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, as I said, are we're all moving full steam ahead, ready for, uh, for opening whenever that happens, whenever that happens, we'll be ready. But in the meantime, we are continuing in our, with our programming. And here's uh, our newest, one of the newest members of, of, our, of our team uh, with a message for you. Buenas noches, Abelardo, y bienvenidos a todos. My name is Karen Cruz, and I recently joined the Plaza de Cultura y Artes as senior curator. Felicidades to our MCs, Abelardo y Jimena, and their teams for reaching our 100th episode of En Casa con la Plaza and making our inspiring comunidad accessible for everyone to enjoy during these challenging yet creative times. I'm very excited to announce to you that in addition to En Casa and our En Familia programs, that you can now take an interactive virtual tour of our exhibitions. Through our website, you can access Carlos Amaraz, Evolution of Form, and Afro-Latinidad, Mi Casa, My City. Thanks to our curatorial team, we can take a walk through our galleries with 360 degree views on our favorite devices. Gracias y feliz Navidad y Año Nuevo. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. I look forward to meeting and working with all of you and please stay safe over the holidays. Thank you, Karen. Uh, just a, a real quick glimpse of, uh, of what we have in store. Let me back up right here. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, lapca.org, you click on our exhibitions, it lists our, our current ex exhibitions and, and the, the first thing that'll pop up there are our virtual tours. This is not interactive uh, being that it's on a PowerPoint, but uh, you click on the, the different buttons and it basically moves you through the gallery space and you could turn here and there, and, and I think I'll be able to, to show you, but uh, here's another uh, quick uh, view of, uh, of what this incredible technology is capable of. That's the Afro-Latinidad, Mi Casa, My City, just showing one of the, one of the rooms, uh, that's the bedroom. And here we have uh, the Carlos Almaraz uh, portion. And this is, uh, a, for us, it's a new, new technology and our curatorial team, three strong, uh, besides, uh, uh, I'm sorry, let me, let me get back on here. There you go. Uh, let me show you very quickly. I think I could bring up, uh, the the site itself so just give you a real quick gl glimpse at the capability of this tremendous uh technology that uh, our curatorial team has has been able to uh to really learn uh on the fly uh and uh marketing communications myself and, and my team have been able to to enjoy as well so let's see let me pop that up there and let me share the screen with you all right, here goes. Okay, I no, that's not it. I'm sorry. Let me stop that share and grab something else here. All right, here we go. All right, um, here here we are. And um, let's see. I hope you could see that. But basically, you could uh, you could move things around. You could move yourself forward. Here, I'm going to click on that. That's that's uh, on my computer. On my uh, and then turn yourself around and, and look at uh, the, the, the text. You click on that, it gives you the text that you could read that's in Spanish. Uh, our newer exhibitions are in English and Spanish, the text, of course. Uh, you could get a closer look at the photography, at the objects. Here we're gonna turn around here. This is the kitchen area of, the, of Mi Casa, My City. And you turn around here. Uh, it's, it's in the form of a house. The, the exhibition is laid out along with a timeline of uh, Afro-Latinidad, Afro-Latino history in the US, uh, actually throughout the, the, the Americas. And here we have, uh, this was uh, all the collection was from the community. We put out calls for, for artwork and uh, many responded. And, uh, and here we go, I'll, I'll focus in on this. Um, this is my father, my mother, my son, Michael, my, uh, his partner, and my grandchildren, Odiseo, Valentina, 
and and meal. All right, so I'll stop there. But the capabilities of this technology are incredible. And uh, on, log on lapca.org and you, you could check it out for yourself. Okay, we're going to get back to the to the program. We're running out of time here, I think. And here's uh we we spoke of my team. It, it, it's a two two person team, of course, augmented by everybody else. There at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, we all work together on different projects. But here we have Mario Hernandez who assisted with the putting together of, of this presentation tonight. And he out, has done a couple sessions for Casa Con La Plaza. So here, here goes. Well, fantastic. That's good to hear. And, and we got to give a shout out to, to Mario, of course, well loved and respected here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes for his... Uh, for his all around uh, uh, love of the culture and the history, the knowledge, and also sharing it with, uh, with all of our visitors. And especially if, you're, if you like our graphics and our signage and our posters, then that's all Mario, uh, along with uh, doing other things within the marketing communications. And now we're gonna do a, a, a very special uh, presentation of En Casa, which uh, we've, we've touched on a little bit. As you know, our, our education department usually does the workshops, the field trips and so on. They have been planning uh, for the past few months uh, a series that they're going to start real soon called En Familia Con La Casa, which are our workshops and field trips and so on. But but uh, I asked Mario to share some of his knowledge. And first of all, we're going to start with a video that he shot about a month, about a couple months ago, right? It's on. Yes, uh, I was uh, very excited to uh, be a part of it. And uh, we did it from scratch. We did the whole setup, uh, the the cameras, uh, the camera angles. I had a, a camera mounted in my ceiling. So that was, that was fun. Uh, I got both of the clips together and we created a video. Um, I, I really enjoyed also video editing. So that was something that uh, I had the opportunity to, to create as well. Um, throwing music in there, uh, edit, add, insert text. It was, um, it was a project that was created from scratch, and um, you no know, thanks to Avelardo for all his guidance as well. We were able to finish it and, and um, make it available for all to see. Well, here goes. This is the the, the first effort. Uh, it's up on YouTube, but for many of you that haven't seen it yet, here's your opportunity. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. I'm Mario Hernandez, and today we're gonna be making a yourself tutorial on papel picado. It's part of the En Casa Con La Plaza series. Now let's get started. Papel picado dates back way to the Mesoamerican times where local tribes and natives, including the Aztecs, used to carve spear figures onto bark. Um, later on... Uh... Here, I'm going to start this over again. I'm afraid I'm, I'm sharing the wrong screen. Uh, something that happens uh, a little bit too too frequently when uh, when you're new to to all this technology. I should know better, but here goes. We're going to start it all all over again. Uh, my apologies, but here goes. All right. Yeah, this is live. As you can see, this is a live uh, um, session, and I'm going to ask my my faithful companion to get out of here for a little while. Uh, Mario Hernandez, you could catch that uh, that uh, papel uh, tradicionales, papel, papeles tra tradicionales, where it does a demo on papel picado and also on, on uh, paper sepachul. And then also he does a live demo of some papel picado. Uh, his, that YouTube video on papel picado has garnered more than 11,000 YouTube hits. It's the most popular. Uh, video that we have on uh, our website uh, presently on En Casa Con La Plaza production and then also uh, there for everyone to share. So check them out. Thank you so much, Mario, for all your for all your help here uh, in, in getting this program together along with all the other work that you do. Uh, he's also an artist himself. Uh, he's, he's curated shows. He's a photographer. He uh, serves as a mentor for our interns, for our arts interns from high schools and from colleges, an all around great, great guy. Um, so thank you, Mario. So we're gonna finish up here. We spoke of there uh, of, our, our, of our newest program, En Familia Con La Plaza, to speak about it. Um, here goes one of uh, our, my compañeras. 
um, at La Plaza. So here, here Hi, we go. My name is Gina Elisa Lopez Ramos, Director of Education and Community Engagement. As many of you know, the education team at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes has always provided hands-on learning opportunities for students, teachers, and families. We've had the honor of welcoming you onto our campus, as well as greeting you directly in your own communities. This year, things are obviously a little different. We're really excited to continue providing hands-on learning opportunities that stream directly to you and your families at home. Our newest education series, En Familia con la Plaza, brings hands-on art, garden, and culinary workshops directly to you. Streaming on YouTube, workshops premiere throughout the month on Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. If you haven't been tuning in, the holidays are a great time to catch up. Visit La Plaza's webpage for our complete schedule of premiere dates, including workshops premiering this month of December. Download instructional guides to each video segment and check out our YouTube channel for a complete playlist. Stay connected and see what our education team has in store for 2021. Hasta pronto! All right, let's get started. Now, during our workshop, there are two important questions I want you to think about. Question number one, the summer can be a great time for healthy snacks. What are some healthy snacks or meals that you've had during the summer? Uh, example, my favorite summer snack has to be watermelon. Question number two, why are healthy snacks and meals important for school and for schoolwork? So take a moment to think about that and discuss with your family around you. Now, before we begin, let's explore our ingredients. Uh, when we think of cooking, we often think about just preparing the food, but sometimes we forget about the origins of the food or where the food comes from, or even the stories and history that the food brings. So let's explore the origins of some of the ingredients that we will be using today. All right. Hi. Who's ready to start your own container garden inside your home? I am. But first, we need to prepare the container. We're going to do this step by step. Please follow me along. Step one, make sure to wash your milk carton with soap and water before using it. And don't forget to let it dry. I have mine ready and clean right here. Step two, using the ruler, Trace the desired height of your container. And then have your caregiver cut it for you. Make a few holes in the bottom using the scissors like this. Sometimes it can be hard to cut it. Therefore, always ask your caregiver for assistance. Step three. All right, to, uh, to find out what step three is, you're gonna have to tune in to uh, the En Familia Con La Casa, En Familia Con La Plaza, uh, on our YouTube page at La Plaza LA. So far they have 12 videos up uh, ranging from uh, healthy taquito wrap, uh, pico de gallo ingredients. Uh, you probably recognize Armando Rodriguez, uh, our, our, our manager of culinary arts at Mireya, our, our garden manager there, uh, along with Erica Garcia and, and Liz Gama, uh, headed by Gina Alicia, uh, a great team of educators who are bringing these sessions to you uh, in casa, in familia. And that's what we are, we're, we're a familia. We work on these projects together, uh, sometimes uh, uh, from a socially distant way, uh, but also you know, hand in hand. And uh, with the videos, we've been assisted by Javier Guillen. Thank you so much, Javier Guillen, uh, who's been a, a contractor with La Plaza for a number of years, helping out both marketing communications and our social media and our videography and our photography, and now taking a new role with education. So that kind of wraps up, I think, uh, our our Hi. our last. I mean, our this 100th session. It's been a lot of fun. It's been it's a little late there. This is longer than we usually go on in Casa con la Plaza, but it's a special one. Again, this isn't the best of. It's just a few of the ones that uh, we selected to showcase 
to all of you out there um, who have, if this is your first time joining La Plaza, in Casa con La Plaza, please return. We're on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at least. Uh, next week, we do have a, a full program. If I could pull it up here on, uh, on my other screen here, uh, I could tell you what's coming on. Uh, we're going to take a couple weeks off to recharge so I could start getting together the, the quarter for next year. But next um, Monday, the history of Masa with, um, with Maite Gomez Rejon, uh, sponsored by Northgate. Uh, on Wednesday, this is going to be a, a very spiritual uh, session, the culture, virtue, and tradition with the author Yolanda Nava, who will be speaking about uh, her book. Uh, it's all in the frijoles. 100 famous Latinos share real life stories, time tested bichos, favorite folk tales, and inspiring words of wisdom. And then finally, a big holiday special next Friday, the 18th, Dan Guerrero Happy Hour with uh, guests Luis Perez de los Lobos sharing some Christmas stories and some of uh, the, the music that the Los Lobos recently, last year, Llegó Navidad, uh, their Christmas album, an incredible piece of music if you have an opportunity to, to check it out. And their special guest, Linda Rostad. So please uh, tune in next week. Um, those of you who, who came in late, this will be posted on our YouTube page, on our website, on our Facebook page, of course. and. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you to, to John Echeveste, our leadership team there at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, my colleagues, my friends, my compadres, my, mi comadres, uh, all of you out there who have uh, tuned in faithfully to, to our sessions. If this is your, your first time, first 50th time, or if you're a veteran of all 100, man, what can I say? You're, you're a glutton for punishment. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway. Uh, one last uh, video, I think. So here goes. Let's see what we have. y para los lobos con muchísimo cariño también. We love you. Speak softly.
course, La Marisol. Habla Santa Cecilia, accompanied by Mary Alfaro and Pepe Carlos. That was uh, shot by Mario Hernandez and by Javier Guillen and uh, edited by Mario. And this was a presentation for our, our fundraising gala, which took place uh, in October, uh, a virtual gala that you can catch on our website, lapca.org and on our YouTube page at, uh, at La Plaza LA and also on our Facebook page uh, where we honored Los Lobos along with Castro de la Rocha, uh, CEO of Ultimate. Thank you to all that tuned in, that hung in here for uh, an hour 45. We usually don't um, stay up this late. Uh, and uh, thanks to our sponsors um, and, um, and the staff and so on, everybody that contributed, all the talent that's out there, that um, their intellectual talent, their musical talent, artistic talent, um, thank you so much for, for being part of this, this, uh, this session. I hope that we have brought you, our audience, some um, just entertainment, education, information, a uh, little hope in these pandemic times. I'm getting a little sentimental here, so uh, I usually don't do this until after the show is over, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, salute to La Plaza de Cultura and all of you, best of luck uh, over the holidays. And, and beyond, and uh, nos vemos pronto. Buenas noches, hasta la próxima, bye-bye.